Remember not long ago when we found out that a number of senators had made a number of incredibly suspicious stock sales and purchases as they were getting uh, behind the scenes information about the likely spread of coronavirus and they appeared desperate to ward off economic losses that indeed did come for many people who own stock. Well, we've got more numbers uh, to add on to that story. A new analysis of financial disclosure documents found that Republican and Democratic members of Congress made nearly 1,500 stock transactions worth up to $158 million between February and April as the coronavirus spread across the U.S. This is coming from the Campaign Legal Center, and they said that uh, the stock trading was bipartisan. 27 Democrats, 21 Republicans, and one Independent were making trades as the devastation that COVID-19 would exact on the U.S. crystallized. Most congressional members are millions millionaires, and a number have investments in the tens of millions and are far more likely to have investments in the markets. And um, specifically, so what sorts of trades? Because it's one thing for them to trade. They're millionaires. They have money. They have stock. In any given couple month period, they're probably going to trade a lot of stock. Here's what makes it a little bit suspicious. So they say that of those transactions, some members of Congress were strategically buying stock in companies that might see a boost during the crisis, as well as selling stocks that seemed likely to tank. Public servants made purchases in remote work technologies, telemedicine companies, and car manufacturers that were shifting their production to ventilators. Sales were made in companies in the restaurant and hospitality industries. So Aaron, I don't, I don't think that we've talked since like the Kelly Loeffler and Richard Burr stuff came out. But it looks like that while they might have sold the most in a short period of time, they were hardly alone in trying to either make money during the situation or at least avoid losing tons of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And seeing this today. OK, so so way back in the day during the financial crisis in 2008, I worked in finance. I worked at Merrill Lynch and I had my licenses to be a stockbroker. And one of the questions that I have reading stories about this is, I wonder if I wonder what the bank reports on these companies said when these people were making these trades, because if you have a broker and you call them up and you tell them you want to sell stocks that are really highly rated by your company in favor of stocks that are sort of meh, uh -huh. there's no reason for them to have like a positive analysis of your broker would give you a little bit of pushback because even though you have the final say in what you buy and sell in most arrangements, uh, if you're doing something that seems really dumb, your broker would be like, what's going on? If you're a member of Congress, I can imagine that there are some brokers who ask some questions. And I, I think that reporters who are covering this would be really well served to look, in, look into what the ratings of those stocks were at the time of those trades and then see if maybe some of these Congress people were telling their brokers things that they shouldn't be telling their brokers. I mean, it, it it is not surprising to me that people who act in their own self-interest are acting in their own self-interest in this way. It's especially disgusting because they're profiting off of a pandemic that is hurting millions and millions and millions of people, billions of people worldwide. But I think that this is probably something that's endemic to an entire part of our culture, which is people having access to information that could be useful publicly, but instead using it mm -hmm. to profit privately. So, I mean, it's really disgusting, but not surprising. And I hate that I'm that cynical. You know, that that's really interesting what you, what you brought up. Um, that's sort of like if they had raised concerns when asked to do these trades, is that the sort of thing that there would be any kind of paper trail for traditionally? Um, I mean, a broker would be really stupid to email about that. I, I would imagine okay. that they were probably, if 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 conversations happened, if a congressman was stupid enough to talk about how they wanted to do insider trading, they probably wouldn't have done it over something that had a paper trail. And, you know, any conversation would probably have been in person or over the phone. But it just seems like it, if I were a broker to a member of Congress and they were all of a sudden telling, calling me and selling all of these stocks that, you know, are for people who go outdoors in life and <laughs> buying stocks for people being stuck indoors. I would be like, what do you know that I don't know? You mm -hmm. know, and and why are you doing why are you acting in a way that is not in line with what our company is recommending people do? I mean, these are just questions that I have. I don't want to sound like Alex Jones right now, but I think <laughs> that this is there's probably a lot more to this story than we know. And I hope people keep looking into it. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, ever since especially the, the Burr and Loeffler stuff came out and, and they said, well, especially Loeffler, she said, I don't control the sales. I mean, the obvious follow up question is, well, then that's an amazing coincidence that you had the private information, but you didn't act on it and you didn't share it. But someone else who is in charge of your stocks acted exactly as you would if you had had access to that information. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's going to be very difficult to actually prove that it happened. 
let alone for there to be any consequences, since apparently you're allowed <laughs> to do that. Um, but it sure does seem interesting. It does seem like a big coincidence. Well, so, I mean, it sounds like the explanation here is telepathy. And if we do have a congressman <laughs> with telepathy, then we should be utilizing her in our intel gathering. It'd probably save us a ton of money, and it would probably yeah. prevent us from making mistakes. So I think maybe Senator Leffler should you know, start uh, applying her skills to figuring out what uh, the enemies of America are doing and, and stopping <laughs> civilian harm. I, that's just, that's just me. I'm that's, just, that's just my opinion. You're thinking outside of the brain. Uh, are, you, <laughs> are you picking up anything from the leadership of North Korea right now? I don't know. Um, but I would like to, in light of this new information, I would like to re-up uh, a tweet that we had previously used on the show from Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on March 20th, saying members of Congress should not be allowed to own individual stock. We are here to serve the public, not to profiteer. It's shocking that it's even been allowed up to this point. And you can see there that a lot of people uh, tend to agree with that. Actually, I don't know where you stand on this. She's, she sees it as a potential solution to the, the issue that we saw with profiteering around the pandemic. But of course, I mean, there are any number of different pieces of legislation that hypothetically could be used to inform stock purchases or sales. I'm personally worried that, you know, Steve Mnuchin having so much unilateral control over that multi-trillion dollar slush fund that could be handed to corporations. What's mm -hmm. to stop him from investing in a corporation before he gives it a windfall of billions and billions of dollars or spreading yeah. the information so others can make money off of it. It seems weird that when they have power to influence the success or failure of industries, that they would be able to be invested in those same industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's really hard to make a law that will prevent all of the innovative smash and grabs that happen whenever there's a crisis in this country. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's like, you know, I've, I've said this before and other people have made this comparison, but, you know, every time there's a crisis in a in a poor neighborhood and people like are stealing bread to feel, feed their family, it's looting. But every time there's a national crisis, crisis and rich people are just stealing money from the tax coffers. It's, it's somehow a, it's a stimulus package. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's really, it's really frustrating. I think there, I think the perks of being in Congress should be enough without having to become a millionaire. Like you have the best healthcare of anybody in yeah. the country. Like you get paid a six figure salary. You get to work in a beautiful office. Like you have to deal with your constituents, but that's part that's part of the job. Mm -hmm. Ideally you can make America a better place. I think during the time that you're in Congress, there needs to be some regulation in the way that you're allowed to behave in the stock market. I'm just not a lawmaker, so I can't write laws. And I but I do think that starting with, okay, what if they're not allowed to own individual stock? That's a good place to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think the conversation would actually have to probably lead to something a little bit more complicated. But it it's completely true. AOC is completely right that what is happening is, is egregious and no voter would vote to put somebody in office if they thought that they were going to do this. Exactly. Exactly. And supposedly the, the Trump fans should like this. I mean, after all, they want to drain the swamp. They don't want elites getting rich, you know, uh, by manipulating laws. But obviously, they're not actually pushing for that. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.